The ordinal signifying property of color value seems to persist in the context of animation, though under some conditions the darker means more rule established for print cartography may not hold. The use of grayscales to communicate ordered relationships has been a crucial issue in cartography because static maps are often reproduced in black and white. Monochrome reproduction brings no economic advantage to cartographic animation, however. Color may be an expensive option in static print graphics, but it is standard in computer displays, videotape, and film. No visual variable attracts more attention or elicits stronger reactions than color hue. Yet, according to Berton and many other commentators, the appropriate use of hue in cartography is limited to the representation of nominal level data, such as land use, geologic structure, or the party affiliation of candidates for public office. Cartography instructors routinely warn students that the gratuitous use of color is a typical cause of nonsensical maps. This advice would seem to hold for dynamic maps as well. Color cycling is a common animation technique for emphasizing flows along a path. Even when color value and hue are held constant as they are here, saturation changes are perceived as resembling value changes. Both signify ordinal relationships. In this example, the pulsing saturation cycle emphasizes direction by introducing an ordered variation that is redundant with the orientation of the flow arrows. By varying the rate of the cycle, we can suggest greater and lesser flow magnitudes. By varying the orientation of symbols, we can represent nominal level data like wind direction in an animated map. The rate at which orientation changes may be used to connote the variability of the phenomenon or the sampling resolution at which the data were collected. In the jargon of animation, the stepped transformation of one shape into another is called tweening. The smoothness or abruptness of a tween varies with the magnitude of shape change between steps and the duration of each step. As in static graphics, if the size of an entity is held constant, a shape change seems to signify only a nominal level change in its referent. To summarize, we find that contrary to Breton's disclaimer, the system of visual variables and their signifying properties seem applicable to the design of animated cartographic representations. But we also recognize three dynamic variables introduced by the animation process that cartographic designers can use in concert with the existing visual variables. We begin by distinguishing the world from the map. In the phraseology of the Swedish cartographer Janos Jago, an instant in time in the history of the world is called a situation. The representation of a situation is called a scene in animation terms and may take the form of a static map. 
The dynamic variable associated with a scene is duration, the number of units of time that a scene is displayed. There is a difference between displaying a scene as a static map and as part of an animation. The animator controls the duration of a scene. All other features of a scene are accounted for by variations in the visual variables. In this simple example, we compare relatively long and short durations of a single scene. Jago refers to a coherent sequence of two or more situations as an event. The representation of an event thus requires two or more scenes, which may be superimposed on a static map or sequenced in an animation. Animation becomes the more clearly preferable alternative as the number of scenes increases. A second dynamic variable, rate of change, becomes available in the animation of an event. Two kinds of change between scenes appear to be possible in cartographic animation. Change in the position of an entity in a scene and change in the attributes of an entity. Both kinds consist of changes in visual variables. Change in position is variation in the x and y dimensions of the plane, and change in attribute is variation of the other visual variables. The dynamic variable we call rate of change is comprised of two components. The duration of each scene, and the magnitude of change in position and attributes of entities between scenes. First, we observe the effects of changing scene durations for a sequence of scenes. If we define a relatively long duration for each scene, changes between scenes appear abrupt, and viewers have a relatively long time to examine individual scenes. By shortening duration, the change in position appears smoother and more rapid, while the flashing change in attribute appears more urgent. Now let's consider the effect of varying the magnitude of changes between scenes while holding duration constant. Increasing the magnitude of change between scenes results in a choppy sequence, which may be appropriate for representing discontinuous events. Decreasing the magnitude of change in position makes the change appear more smooth. The apparent velocity of the sequence is slower because more scenes have been added while maintaining constant duration. A third dynamic variable is the order in which scenes are presented. The logic of chronological sequencing of scenes associated with a time series data set is obvious. There are instances when ordering series by a metric other than chronology is logical and potentially fruitful in geographic analysis, as we show later.